Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking on the video and joining me here at the Tech Update. Today we're going to do a comparison between the Trimi iSmart Pro and the Anmonic RG40XXH. These are two handheld gaming devices that are very similar. In fact, I would actually say that the RG40XXH is a bit of a clone of the Smart Pro. It seems that Anmonic has been going around and taking the most interesting elements from the most popular handouts out there and incorporating it into their units. But before we get stuck in, just a bit of a disclaimer. The facts in this comparison is based off extensive research of user reviews, expert opinions, and publicly available information. It is not a hands-on experience, so take it as a general guide. I do believe that it can be helpful to you, as I think that I unearthed some interesting facts when comparing these two units. So remember to like, subscribe, and share if you find some value from it, as it truly helps the channel out. With that said, let's take a look at the specs. In this regard, I'm only going to highlight the main differences, but feel free to pause the video and look through it in your own time. First up, Smart Pro has a slightly faster processor than the H on paper, but when you look at the testing done by reviewers, they perform very similarly. I'll cover that a little bit more later. The next major and most obvious difference are the screens. The Smart Pro has a higher resolution screen than the 40XXH that displays 3x2 and 16x9 content brilliantly. This means that any GBA or widescreen games like PSP titles will get optimal screen real estate. What's also worth a mention is that while 4x3 content like Sega Genesis and SNES titles don't fill the whole screen, they do still get a bigger display than the 40XXH. Another aspect that seems like it is an advantage for the Pro is that it has a 5000 mAh battery. The 40XXH only has a 3200 mAh battery. But in all my research, most reviewers seem to agree that the Trimu iSmart Pro has a 5-6 to six hour average battery life. And when you look at what is being said about the 40XXH, it is similarly mentioned to have about 5-6 to six hours worth of average gameplay. All of this does depend on what you are playing though. I think we'll have a more accurate view of this though once somebody actually brings out a video that compares the two units side by side. So let's wait and see. One area where the 40XXH does have a bit of an advantage is that it has 5G Wi-Fi, which should make streaming a bit more smoother. The 40XXH also has the ability to output its display over the mini HDMI port, which is not an option on the Smart Pro. With that said, let's consider the differences in ergonomics and design. And there isn't much here because the 40XXH is basically modeled off the Pro. But the Pro is obviously larger, and due to that, reviewers regularly comment on how comfortable it is to hold. For my assessment, you should be able to have longer, more extended play sessions on it compared to the 40XXH. On the flip side, the 40XXH is more pocketable and portable due to its smaller size. So if you're looking for a unit that you can carry around with you in your pants pocket, you may want to opt for the H. Both have issues with their controls though. The Smart Pro's analog sticks are inset, and this limits the amount of motion that you have on them. Reviews also mentioned that its D-pad and trigger buttons are quite stiff, and in comparison, you need to press down harder on these to get the inputs that you want. The good part about that is that you don't get a lot of false diagonals when playing games like Contra. In general, the Pro also has quieter ABXY buttons from what I've seen. The analog sticks on the 40XXH on the other hand is known for directional snapping when you use it as is out of the box. This basically means that they are not as accurate as the sticks on the Pro. The D-pad on the H isn't as precise as well and is prone to false diagonals. But reviewers were quite happy with the triggers on it though. So given all the before mentioned, it seems that the units are quite evenly matched when comparing them. Unfortunately, the similarities doesn't end there either. In terms of performance, both of these systems will play anything up to PS1 games brilliantly. So if you like older retro games like Sega Genesis, SNES and Game Boy Advance, both of these systems will serve you well. Both units can play games on higher end systems like Nintendo 64, Dreamcast and PSP. They do struggle with more 3D intensive titles though, and apparently only about 50% of the Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast catalog is playable. The Smart Pro might have a slight edge here, as it displays the 16x9 content on Nintendo 64 and PSP a lot better, and it also has Vulkan support, so you may want to consider that when deciding between these two units. Both of these units do have custom firmware options available that are currently supported and has ongoing development. But the 40XXH is quite new, so it has less than the Smart Pro currently. That might change though, given the fact that its chipset is available in more devices, and if it becomes more popular, developers will be more willing to create custom designed software for it. Given the before mentioned, it's clear that these two units trade blows in terms of which one is better. 
So a choice will obviously heavily depend on the use case you've in mind for the unit and your specific circumstances. To help you clarify and make a decision, let me summarize what I've said and give you a list of pros and cons between these two units. The Trimio Smart Pro has a larger, higher resolution display. It's more comfortable for extended play. It has a good D-pad with minimal false diagonals. It displays GBA 3x2 and PSP 16x9 content brilliantly on its 5-inch display. It supports widescreen hacks for certain games. And it has custom firmware options like Tomato OS, Nuli, and the recently released Crossmix OS. Its trigger buttons are not great though, and the inset analog sticks suffer from a lack of range of motion. It has no video output, and it is limited to 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. The Anbenic 40X6H on the other hand has a more pocketable design and has slightly better trigger buttons. It includes video output via Mini HDMI and supports 5 GHz Wi-Fi. Its custom firmware options include MIUOS and MinUI at the moment. On the negative side, it has a smaller screen with a lower resolution, and it is probably less comfortable for long gaming sessions. It has a smaller battery, and the D-pad may suffer from false diagonals. In conclusion, both devices have their strengths and their weaknesses. The Smart Pro excels in screen quality and ergonomics, making it ideal for longer gaming sessions and titles that will benefit from a larger display. The 40XXH on the other hand has a more portable design with better connectivity and video output capabilities. Personally though, I would rather opt for the Trimio iSmart Pro, as I just feel that that larger screen size with a high resolution provides a bit more value. I have also seen the Smart Pro cost as little as $55 on certain sales. The 40XXH just feels a bit unremarkable to me, and just doesn't have enough to differentiate it from the slew of other Anbenic devices that's been released this year. It's not a bad unit though, and I'm sure that for many people, especially beginners, it could be a brilliant first retro handheld. It's just not the one that I would choose at this stage. Let me know in the comments what you think though. Which one would you choose? If you want some more detail on the Trimio iSmart Pro though, you can click on the links on screen now for my video overviews on it. That's it for this one though. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next tech update.